So I'm in San Francisco, and I'm actually going to Berkeley at the moment, and we're going to be doing a whole bunch of amazing science videos there. And quite appropriately, I'm being driven by Henry from Minute Physics. I'm sure most of you already watch his videos, but Henry's going to drive me there, drop me off, and then we're going to have a look around and show you some really cool stuff. And then he gave us this badges here, with this element. See these signs here? Here at Berkeley, they have parking spaces reserved just for Nobel laureates. So how do you prove you're a Nobel laureate? Do you have to do you have to put your medal on the dashboard? Uh. <laughs> you got, you got, what's, what's it called? You got your put your metal to the pedal or the pedal <laughs> to the metal. What do you think, Dali? Go on, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Should science buildings look like this or should they be the modern glass ones? I like them like this. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? That's the way. But it's not efficient probably these days. Let's go and have a look at it. Let's go and have a look closer look. And Seaborg claims that it was the dark and stormy night of February 21 when they did the chemistry. I'm out of breath. <laughs> In the stairs, me too. <laughs> so they still probably had to do some further experiments to substantiate it, and I suppose that's why they put the 23rd and 4th on here. But he clearly says it was the dark and stormy night of February 21st, late at night. All good experiments happen late at night when you're ready to quit. Is that just bad luck or do you think there's a reason for that? There's a reason for that. It's when you think you just can't go on and you do the little extra experiment or a little extra thing that's necessary to pin it down. And I've found that many times. Professor, this lab is obviously a historic site. We can see from what's on the wall here. Is it still used for science or is it like a museum now? I think this answers the question. It says Newman Lab Research on Electrochemical Systems. What do you think about that? It's Berkeley. <laughs> you don't rest on past laurels. I had always wanted to look for heavier elements because when I was at Los Alamos, the big U.S. thermonuclear test was had just been tested in the South Pacific. I had been at Oak Ridge sooner and came to Los Alamos following my husband, and they lost my clearance between Oak Ridge and Los Alamos. So I missed being a co-discoverer of Einsteinium and Fermium, and I've never, ever gotten over it. So you missed out on being a co-discoverer of those elements because of an administrative mistake? Exactly. In those days, they didn't track those things with computers and one thing and another. Well, we would irradiate samples in the cyclotron down there and then um, take the sample out, take the, from the radiation area, put it in a lead pig, put it in the car, and then drive all the way up here, hell bent for breakfast, and bring it into our uh, laboratories in the building right behind you. What, why, what was the hurry? Why not just do it leisurely after lunch? Or? Well, because we wanted to look at things that had minute half-lives or multiple minutes. That was about as good as we could do with that method. Why didn't you just put the chemistry lab closer to the cyclotron? Well, later on we did. That's a much better idea. <laughs> you should have employed me. I would have been brilliant. Well, we had to get them to 
let us do that too and have the space. And I think maybe I told you when we were down there, we put a little mezzanine right there above the cyclotron and then we could run a helium jet transfer tube to take things into our little mezzanine hood. What's a lead pig? A lead pig is a container made of lead with a hole in the middle of it that you drop the sample in and then put a lid on it. And to tell you the truth, I've asked person after person, I have no idea why they were called pigs. So this is like one of the most sophisticated, important laboratories in the world, and you were making new elements, and then you're putting them in a car and rushing them up the hill like a, like a car chase. Well, um, I was not a party to the discovery of any new elements, but these were isotope, new isotopes we were looking for, same idea, and they also did the same thing for some of the elements. Who used to drive the car? Who was the getaway driver? I was trying to remember, I think maybe Al Giorso sometimes, and maybe sometimes Greg Chopin, who was a graduate student. What's this you've come to show me? Where are we standing? So we're on a hill above and opposite the University of California campus. This is the Lawrence Hall of Science. It's part of the university. It's a sort of museum, science museum for children. They come in here. What's special about this is not just something you look at, but it's hands-on, you play with it. This is a facsimile of the first iron cyclotron built by Ernest Orlando Lawrence. He got the Nobel Prize for that. And it's this acceleration of ions by alternating magnetic fields that makes it possible to get fast ions to do these nuclear bombardments and through that mechanism create new elements. And that's something that, uh, of course, Glenn Seaborg was deeply involved in. Professor, as a, as a modern scientist that now is still working in an age where we have large hadron colliders and some really large accelerators, how do you feel about objects like this? Does this still excite you and inspire you or does this seem small to you now? Oh, on the contrary. I always go back to the origins. I always say go back to the original. I mean, if you understand relativity, you read Einstein's paper on relativity. Of course the things that come out of it are critical, but going back to see how this arose from nothing, as opposed to the sort of growth of the enormously powerful things today that have really probed nature to its extreme. This is exciting, scientifically, creative-wise, and uh, just as an emotional thing. It's absolutely wonderful. Seaborg in later days didn't like to drive all that well because he had arthritis so badly. Oh, yeah. And so he would ask if I'd drive him to campus. Yay! Why, because you got to have a I Nobel Prize spot? Right. <laughs> I 